Hey guys and welcome to Petroped and welcome to a video I'm making with an amazing charity called Future Terrain. I'm going to take you along with my adventures for the week with an armed forces charity doing incredible things with incredible people. Now, even though this is the beginning of the video, I am actually at the end of the third day of my expedition with Future Terrain. And I'm on a beautiful army training facility called Braunton Sands in Devon. And we've had an epic three days, especially today. We've been learning how to do off-road driving on sand today. But I wanted to just talk to you a little bit about Future Terrain and then tell you about what we're doing for the week and this video. I was first approached by Future Terrain at the end of last year and asked if I wanted to come along and see what they did and the amazing work they did and meet some of the guys that they work with and of course I jumped at the chance. Mm -hmm. Now Future Terrain work with uh, veterans and current members of the armed forces um, on a, a range of different rehabilitation programs through the avenue of adventure motorsport, um, namely kind of adventure off-road driving, rallying and all of the mechanics and, and the qualifications that go behind that. Uh, and they've done some epic things, they raced across the Sahara last year for example. And the, the plans were for us to do some stuff earlier on in this year year but for obvious reasons that that didn't happen and then this week we should have been actually driving over the Pyrenees off-road in Dacia Dusters because Future Terrain is sponsored by Renault Dacia and they use Dacia Dusters and I must say you need to watch this video if you don't think that Dacia Dusters have got off-road credentials then you are so wrong it's unbelievable but my week started by um, first of all turning up to Bovingdon Tank uh, where the Tank Museum is the regiment there um, and we spent our first um, our first day doing what's called a Lantra qualification so all of the guys that work with Future Terrain are Lantra trained and I was um, I had to go through that qualification so we spent about a half a day doing theory in a classroom around you know basic off-road driving principles all of the different mechanics of the car four-wheel drive systems differential systems all the types of uh, basic theory uh, and we then got some practical exercises in terms of doing things like winching drills talking about digging out cars uh, looking at all of the um, you know, emergency equipment and so on on the car and then uh, the next day we headed off into the Dorset countryside to do some green laning Now, as you can see from that, the green laning was just beautiful, amazing countryside. It wasn't the most technically challenging um, driving. There were a few moments where we got a little bit hairy, cross-axling and wading through reasonably deep water. Um, but the game changed up this morning. So we arrived here last night. We we're staying about an hour's uh, drive from Braunton Sands and we turned up on the training facility today and we've been basically doing uh, sand driving. So let's basically look at what I've been doing today. Um, it's been unbelievable absolutely unbelievable we started well we started only the only way you can when you're doing off-road driving we started by getting a car stuck now then guys let me introduce charles from future terrain who well you'll be it's because of you i'm here yeah <laughs> you reached out back end of last year so we have arrived at the training uh facility in devon and we're going to do sand driving today we are going to do a lot of sand driving today. <laughs> and it's really cool. We've got the four dusters. We've got how many outriders? We've got four? Yeah, four we've got four motorbikes with us. Four motorbikes with us. So we've done lots of green laning yesterday and lots of theory uh, the day before, but this is where it starts to get serious. Yeah, it's kind of progressing on. So the green laning yesterday is uh, it's a gentle introduction. You've got to be very respectful, very careful 
uh, and members of the public. You've got a right to be there. But it's a different kind of thing. It's sort of rambling in the countryside, great views, and there was some technical stuff there which you appreciate when the wheel was up in the air. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, cocking my wheel. Three foot off the ground. Um, and this is moving on, this is a materially different kettle of fish. We yeah. actually do a lot of training there. World War II, they used to do all the preparations for D-Day. I think it was 18,000, something like that, 14,000 troops in three weeks come through here to wow. do all the assaults and preparation because it is very representative of Normandy, but it's also very representative, bits of it are very representative of the Sahara. Yeah, there's some big yeah, dunes yeah. out there. So that's what we're here today to move from our basic level lantern training and introduction to off-road, which is more around sort of British stuff. It's more yeah. mud and grass and tracks. Yeah. Very difficult to get any experience with sand unless you go to a desert. Yeah. But we can get it here, so this is what we're doing. Awesome. And then the other thing we just need to mention, we've got very strict COVID guidelines operating this week and we're all living in bubbles. And Charles and I are in the same bubble, so that's why we don't need to have masks on in the car. And we've got the windows cracked. So just before anybody jumps in the comments and says, well, where's your masks? But I'm now going to concentrate because I've noticed we've got we got sand. You better so focus, this I is already getting deep. <laughs> so, we have our first stuck car of the day. So Charles is doing a ground recce because it's wet mud and sand. And we've got one of the dusters stuck. Quite significantly stuck. So we're going to tow him out basically. Uh, it's up to the mid, mid wheel. That's not sunk down in mud. There's a lot of, there's about yay much water and then a bit of slop underneath. I can't get to the door. So the biggest flap they're having at the minute is how to keep their feet dry, which shouldn't be an issue. That should not be the first thing in your head. Not how to keep my feet dry. You want to get your vehicle out and moving. Obviously you want to be making sure that car two stays on flipping good ground. Because as it gets damp here, it begins to get slippery. So I'd be prepared, yeah, maybe even pushing back a bit. I'd use an extension if need be. Yeah, if everyone wants to get clear, and Peter, if you take the car back, uh, you want to get it back to a safe point where you're happy that the vehicle is on super good ground but you've also got to have a straight pull as well so i suggest you can go back about 10 feet yep. but keeping it across to the right Live. Okay, line is live. Safety wise, then we do not want to be either side of this rope. We're either behind the winch car or the guys who are in it are in it. Okay, tension now, sticking out the water. Are ready? Yeah, ready. Put on the brake, Peter. Yeah. Don't give up, keep winching. Winch all the way out. Peter, if you're in neutral, give it a tiny bit of revs. Just a touch. Keep winching him all the way. Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> was just brilliant. It's so funny, you kind of do all the drills, the learning about towing and winching and all that kind of stuff. And then and we've been on the training ground less than half an hour and someone gets stuck. So really interesting winching drill. What won't have come across on camera is how much suction that car had in that water. It didn't look that that bad but you know the the winch and to pull the car out was a, was a real effort and they're quite high rated winches um really importantly the line that we use the strop that we used are very very highly rated they're rated to be able to pull i think five tons um so although these cars probably weigh you know not much over sort of 1500 1500 kilos something like that by the time you add the suction of that water that's where it becomes quite dangerous so what we're now doing and and titch and the guys um, they were leading us on the mountain bikes because they're kind of working out where we're going to go on the terrain Titch is our kind of instructor today. So he, he's um, purposefully left us at road tyre pressures So um, what we're now doing is we're dropping all of the tyre pressures down to just 15 psi And that will fundamentally transform how the car behaves on the sand The most important thing you need to remember though when you do that is when you get back onto the tarmac set them back up to tarmac pressures But sand driving 45 uh, sorry 15 psi, but that was absolutely brilliant Mate. So, my mighty instructor, we're going to have a go. Still the same stuff. Traction, ground clearance and stability. However, having done the next obstacle, it's kind of super difficult in any car because it's a massive grit hole in the ground full of mud and yeah. water. So we're going to give it a go. We're going to put through some of the skills we've learned. I think ideally we'd like to do this at the end of the day because this is building up the skill. <laughs> but but it's safe and if it goes wrong it'll be me getting out and running the winch out and all that kind of stuff. Oh, rock so on, rock. Just there's get no me. real oh, downside to you getting get this wrong. Yeah, oh. pretty much. Ah, let's do it. Come on. So we're, what we're going to do... Go wrong, we've got everybody watching. And so we're going to hug the left hand side. We're not going to worry too much about the paintwork. Yeah. And I'll pull the mirror in <laughs> and we're going to go down. Now the key thing is the speed. I think it's probably second gear. It's difficult because first and second are quite long and quite... Um, there's quite a difference there but we're going to go for... This is tricky. We're going to go for first, we need the torque. We're going to go for first, we're going to stay right into the left, and you're going to go in, you're going to keep tight to the left, and you're just going to keep progressing. We're probably going to do about seven or eight miles an hour as you hit the water. If you go at 50 miles an hour, the water would come in, flood the engine, engine's ruined, right. and it's too dangerous. We wouldn't do that, it's not okay. the right speed. So it's a balance of the right speed and not too fast but not too slow but we need to keep momentum so you want to minimize hand movements to so set yourself up to go all the way through because as soon as you start to ride. turn the wheel yeah you're going to come in and face across and then we're obviously not on the brake we're not on the clutch you're on the accelerator but you're not revving up and down you're holding it there and we'll get the speed right and i'll increase your energy as we hit this yeah. and we're going to stay left and we're just going to keep going in first in first and come on people go. so go for first yeah i'm in four wheel drive Come across to the left now, swing across left and power on, power on, energy, stay left, stay left, stay left, stay left, stay left, keep going, keep going. Power on, power, 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 power. Yes! yes. And out. <laughs> Mate. <laughs> Traction, ground clearance, stability. And we'll just peel off left here, break can we, track. Can we, can we be smug? We can be actually quite smug. Yes. <laughs> We've arrived at what the guys here call the bowl, which is basically the biggest sand dune I've ever seen in my entire life. And we've got some really important drills here we're going to be talking about, I think, failed ascents. So I'm pretty sure at some point we're going to try and drive up that and then have to reverse back, which is one of the most dangerous things you can do on sand, because if you get it wrong, there's a real risk of the car rolling over, which is not a good thing. So yes, we're going to now have some lessons, I think.
Now then everyone, this is Titch, uh, one of our chief instructors in all things sand driving. Yes indeed, yeah. <laughs> Welcome um, to the channel mate. Uh, thank you, yeah thanks. <laughs> and while we're on YouTube, you need, I will put, so Vin, uh, S-Bomb Vintage Works. That's right, S-Bomb. I shall put the Instagram handle, you need to check out that and also keep an eye out for this guy on the telly box. Indeed, yeah, uh, <laughs> just did a little thing for BBC Two that uh, people may have seen and uh, that was called the Speed Shop but I'm actually doing another thing for the BBC that'll be coming out at the next year. So yeah, nice. we start filming Telly in Star. October. <laughs> see you soon. Yeah, keep an eye out. <laughs> just tip titch and when you see him, just remember yeah. I introduced him to you first. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna do a failed hill ascent lesson. Excellent. One of, the most, one of the most dangerous things you can fundamentally do is roll back down a hill. You see cars on YouTube flipping back downhill, rolling over, occupants come out, kit flies around in the wagons, they can get crushed, they've got roll cages, because it's just gathering momentum, it's scary stuff. So what we teach is a failed hill ascent such that if you go into a situation where you try and climb a hill and you can't do it, you know how to get out of it. So that's what we're going to do now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up and we are planning to fail. So this is, um, this is you know, false um, a, a bit of false jeopardy so we won't go all the way up and at the point where we get to the point where we lose traction you will apply the brake yeah if the car stalls that is okay yeah but you might try and catch it on the clutch but you don't want to put so much effort into that you're not focusing so you just keep going up eventually either the wheel spin or we stall and we get stuck yeah. we then apply the foot brake apply the hand brake we're then looking to select, move it across, and we're looking to select reverse. Yeah. We've got the clutch in, and because of the way this car works, when we put the clutch in, it will have restarted, but you could restart it yourself yeah. if you'd stalled it. And then what we do, we're all set and we're ready to go. We've got a foot on the brake, we're in reverse, the handbrake is on, and we've got control of the car. Now this is a critical bit that's, you can use it anywhere else, but it's more prevalent in sand, is you look your head out the window and check where your tires are, yeah. because so often, especially in cars which are more sporty like race cars, they've just got a standard steering wheel and people think that they've got two or three turns of lock on they didn't realise they had and the yeah. wheels are just going at an angle. So we're going to check that our wheels are straight, we've gone up in a straight line, so we always teach you to go up the hill straight, so we're going to come down in a straight line. Yeah. And the danger with your wheels being at an angle, or indeed you try to steer, which you never do going down the hill, you're always trying to follow the line back down. Because you come up straight, you're going back down straight. Yeah. If the wheels are turned, you do a J turn as you come down the hill and then you're on your side and you start rolling. And that's all the side rollovers you get. So we're not going to do that. So select first in your own time. What do you say when you're about to go? Uh, big ready to move. Ready? Moving. Where are we going? Bit of energy, more energy, probably pull second I reckon. And more energy, here we go, more energy. Keep going, okay, attack the hill, but keep it straight. And attack the hill, and attack the hill. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. And we go. So, okay. you applied the brake, yeah. you've caught it as you put it in, in this car, it automatically restarts. Yeah. So we're gonna apply the handbrake first, that's vital before you drop it out of gear. Yeah. Now, select reverse. So the first thing I said to do was... Oh, I see them. Yeah. 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 Your wheels are straight. I know your wheels are straight, yeah. but you always do the check, because when you get tired, you make mistakes. And what we're going to look to do then is we're going to uh, let the clutch off and let the brake out gently in a minute. And we start together, and you let them out together, so as the vehicle starts to take up on the clutch, it's kind of like a reverse hill start. What you don't want to do is freewheel, because you get out of no. control. So you're using the engine braking to take over. So as the clutch comes up, and the reverse starts to want to make you go backwards, you just let it out and just gently let off, and it will just gently start reversing back. You're not using the accelerator, you're not using the brake, but you're covering the brake, and you can just lightly cadence brake mm -hmm. if you need to, to take a bit of speed off. What you don't do is brake, because it locks up the wheels, and the lock wheel doesn't have any control. So you're just walking the car down the hill, and then you're using the mirrors, and you're checking, and you're checking, and you yeah. just, just take it out. Can you use hill descent control? We can, and we're gonna do it on the second time. It's mega good, but I wanna teach you as if it good was luck. a car that didn't have that capability. Okay. Where you go. Take me all the way back down to a downhill start. That's perfect. Okay, I'm just with a bum up in the air and nose down like that. Now then, peddlers, this motocross legend 
Do you want to explain why your hand is currently on the handlebar as it is, my friend? Uh, yeah, because I'm a bit of an idiot to be honest, but <laughs> no, uh, unfortunately I've, I've got no use of my right arm. It's, uh, it's brachial plexus injury, so nerve injury, so from a shoulder down, no elbow, wrist, no movement of fingers. So, strap myself to the bike because I just love motorbikes and off-roading particularly. <laughs> Look, that is literally, now, where, so your throttle's on the other side? So I've got a throttle here, a clutch uh, and a front brake. Wicked. But I have a, a thing called the recluse clutch, so it's kind of like semi-automatic, so you can go through the gears without using the clutch lever, but you can use it to gain traction, get over logs, etc. So yeah. it's still there, but it's kind of cheating, but it's so, still there. So I've just done a felled hill ascent on there, but you're going up that one, which is even steeper, on a bloody motocross bike. I love it. I'm going to show that it's done. <laughs> Hopefully I won't come off this time. <laughs> <laughs> That guy, that guy's a total and utter legend. And that is, that is everything about future terrain. There's just this can-do spirit. And I've been watching him flying around the training area all day with his hand <laughs> Velcroed to the bars of the bike. Here we go. Hey! And he didn't fall off, man. I stayed up, which is always a bonus when I'm camera. So there you go, there's the, the first couple of days. Now, it starts to get really exciting now. Um, some of the guys are out and about just getting the last few hours of, or probably maybe the last hour of sunlight, um, playing on these dunes. Um, tomorrow morning we're gonna be doing some green laning, but then we're gonna drive up to Wales, um, to a quarry in Wales. You may know it as the home of Zip World, the longest zip line in Europe, and yes, we'll be doing the zip line and I'll be bringing that to the channel as well. Um, but I also wanted to kind of just try and immerse you in this incredible charity and some of the work that they do and, and the incredible experiences and the incredible guys that are there. So um, we're going to um, head off to Wales. Stay tuned on this video. We're going to then do some quarry driving. We've now learned how to drive in the sand. The next thing we need to do is learn how to drive in a quarry. And I think it's going to get a bit extreme. <laughs> 